When I reviewed the new Dell XPS 13 9350 model with Skylake a couple of weeks ago, I was really impressed by it with the battery, the display, the ergonomics. Everything was really, really classy, premium, and I was dead impressed overall. One thing it fell down a little bit was in my brief gaming test when I tried to run Fallout 4. It did play, but unfortunately the frame rate was just too low, even at low settings. But loads of you have been asking, well, what games can it run? Is there anything I can do on the Xperia 13 with its new i5 6200U processor and integrated Intel HD 520 graphics? Can that play anything? So in this video, as you can see, I'm going to run through Bioshock Infinite, City Skyline, Company of Heroes 2, Counter-Strike Go, Dying Light, Grim Fandango Remastered, Left 4 Dead 2, Saints Row 4, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter and The Walking Dead. A very wide selection of games, some uh, more intensive than others, just as, as I say, get an idea of how well we can game on the XPS 13 with the new Skylake chip. So the preset options for Bioshock Infinite were to very low, and this is running at 720p, not the full HD, which is the resolution of the laptop. Now, I think that actually might be a better idea for most games, running it at a lower resolution at 720. This is going to be a bit more of an issue if you have bought the uh, more expensive Quad HD Plus 3800x1800 uh, higher spec model, because uh, uh, not only will games run obviously more poorly at a high resolution, but in order to make them run well, like such as by downscaling to 720p, the uh, issues you're getting sort of blurring and image quality reduction by going down such a you know considerable amount of resolution will be a lot more significant if you're coming from a higher uh, Quad HD res screen. So for gaming, I think the uh, full HD laptop. Uh, model of the XPS 13 was the best option uh, and then we can sort of bring it down to 720p to make it more playable in most games. So uh, as you can see we're at 720p at the moment. Let's bring up the preset to uh, uh, let's, bring it up to, let's bring it up to medium, see what we can get with that. So we're at medium settings now, medium graphics and the frame rate has been hit uh, a little bit, maybe 10 FPS off, we're getting about 40 now so uh, still very playable so let's see what happens if we put that up to full HD and keep it at the native resolution of the laptop. So that's made quite a big difference, you can see, is that's basically halved the frame rate. Obviously it does look a bit nicer, it's a bit crisp, we don't need as much anti-aliasing at this uh, slightly high resolution, but it's, it's halved the frame rate, so I really do think uh, keeping it at 720p, but perhaps with slightly higher settings, uh, other than the resolution, is maybe the best option here. So back at 720, getting 40 to 50 FPS. Uh, this, I think this is very, very playable. This is a high preset settings. But it's a genuinely really good looking game and it's playing superbly well on this XPS 13. I'm really, really impressed with this. When I played Fallout 4 in the review, I was getting about 10 or 15 FPS, really at minimum settings, and that was really disappointing. But I don't think that really gave a good impression of the capabilities of the XPS 13 and the i5 uh, chip. Uh, so this is perhaps a better demonstration of really just how capable this little machine is. So now we're in City Skyline, which is one of my favorite uh, sort of city building games. As you can see, the frame rate is pretty atrocious at the moment. Uh, we'll go in the settings and see what's going on there and see if we can make it much more playable. There's no point showing you this game when there's an empty map, when there's no city built, because uh, that'll give a sort of artificially high frame rate. And once you do build the city, which is sort of the aim of the game, uh, then you'll uh, sort of get a more representative frame rate. So obviously that's not playable. We're getting single digit frame, frame rate. So let's reduce the settings a bit, see if we can make this playable. So I've whacked everything to pretty much bottom settings and applied it, and we've uh, got a better frame rate, almost playable, not really, sort of 10, 15, up to 20 FPS, but this is a pretty uh, big map. You can see the city's pretty substantial, but even at 720, I don't want to go any lower res than that, and even with basically the bottom settings you can get, you know, the game still looks fine. Uh, it's, it's almost playable, perhaps, but uh, not really what I'd recommend getting sort of 15 FPS. That's roughly half what I'd like if we're going with, say, 30 FPS being a playable minimum or average. So, unfortunately, while it is playable and it's sort of going to right, Sky City Skylines is not one that we can comfortably play on the XPS 13. So this is Company of Heroes 2. I'm going to start but with the resolution being uh, 1080p native. I'm going to keep these quality settings around sort of medium to start with, and we'll see what we can do with that. Aliasing will keep off because that's a big uh, hog on the system. So let's keep things at medium to start with at native res and see what we get out of that, what sort of frame rate we're looking at. So we're in the game and that's a pretty good sign so far. This is at native 1080p and uh, medium settings and we're getting sort of 20 to 30 FPS, maybe dropping to 15 uh, in certain uh, locations. But there's nothing really going on at the moment and there's no bases being built, there's no combat. So this is sort of the highest frame rate we can expect. So sort of with a maximum just of 30, I don't think this set, these settings are really uh, going to be playable for this. So let's drop that down to 720p because uh, so far that's made quite a big difference to the resolution. I have to quit this game and come back. 
Okay, we're back in and I've lowered the resolution slightly to 1366 by 768. Uh, so uh, pretty sort of a standard resolution. And you can see the frame rate has improved quite a bit, almost achieving uh, 40 FPS there. And again, as I say, this is a fairly quiet bit of the map, but um, I think it's certainly playable now. Uh, this is at medium settings, uh, 1366 by 768, as I say. So uh, still looking very good running reasonably well. I'm zoomed in on these guys, 45 FPS. Uh, that's going to drop a little bit, you know, during combat and when there's lots of tanks rolling about and bits and pieces. But I think we can say Company of Heroes 2 and therefore 1 as well, which is uh, actually, in my opinion, a slightly better game. Uh, gonna, it's going to run fine on the XPS 13. So we've got Dust 2 loading, which means this must be uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive CS GO. This is one of the uh, top games that people have asked me if this can play. Uh, it's very popular, obviously. So uh, this is currently running at 1080p native res and uh, pretty much medium settings throughout. So let's have a see, see how this uh, goes. So uh, we're online, as you see, there's no point doing it against bots or in a training session. This is what people are gonna be playing. So straight away, look at this, 60 frames per second. I'm gonna get killed or not. Uh, no, I don't know what happened there. 60 plus six FPS. This is, oh no, I got killed. Uh, so yeah, this is 1080p. This is native full HD high definition medium settings, and this is extremely playable. Obviously this needs to be a high frame rate game in order to do well, which is something I'm not doing, but um, dropping down to 30 at that point, but that's only briefly. So I've been killed far too many times already in uh, CSGO here, so I'm gonna leave this and jump onto the next game. But as you can see, this is very, very impressive, and uh, you won't have any problem playing CSGO on the XPS 13 at all. So this is Dying Light, one of the more intensive games I'm gonna play today, and as you can see, uh, the XPS 13 isn't handling it particularly well. This is at 1366 by 768, so we've down resed already. This is at the lowest settings you can go, and we're inside and there's nothing going on, and we're barely breaking 20 FPS here. So uh, Dying Light doesn't look like it's something you're gonna be able to play on this. You can see the aliasing is pretty poor. This is uh, not looking the best. This is a great looking game if you can uh, max it out, if you can uh, get a good high stable frame rate with it. And so uh, I perhaps give this one a miss. This is just a bit too intensive. Perhaps it's not uh, optimized quite as well as the other games. To be fair, it is a very, very good looking game. Uh, I have actually reduced the draw distance to the minimum. It still looks very good, even though uh, we are inside here. But um, yeah, sort of just breaking 20 FPS. I don't think uh, registers as a as a win here. So uh, Dying Light is a is a is a no, unfortunately, on the XPS 13. Grim Fandango is a fantastic game, and as you can see here, the, there aren't a great deal of uh, graphical options in the remastered version. Advanced lighting is on, and resolution scaling is native, so we're running at the full 1080p, which is great. And as you can see, we're getting a minimum of 50 FPS, sometimes getting up to 60. Uh, in this office scene at the beginning of the game. So it looks great. Obviously these backgrounds are pre-rendered. That's how uh, the game is uh, sort of was, was made back in the day. It's been remastered so it looks better. So as you can see this is running really well. Sort of a minimum of 40 FPS in this scene. More like 60 on average. So Grim Fandango not only is a fantastic game, a classic game, uh, that, but it's one that you can easily and comfortably play on the XPS 13. It runs really well and it's obviously something you'd expect it to. Obviously it is quite old so it should be able to run on this sort of hardware and as you can see it does and really well at native resolution and and high uh, lighting settings as well. So very impressive, and Grim Fandango is definitely a play, a game you should play and can play on the XPS 13. So here we are with Left 4 Dead 2, uh, another Source Engine game similar to Counter-Strike GO. So um, what we're seeing so far is that the Source Engine ha is handled really, really well on the XPS 13 and the hardware inside. We're getting 60 FPS here, so 55-60. Uh, obviously we are in a bit of a closed environment. So we can see the frame rate's dropping a bit to 40. Currently this is running at native resolution, again that's 1080p, so full HD, which is good as well as uh, pretty much high settings throughout. So this is uh, definitely uh, one of the best looking games in, sort of, in terms of sort of being able to have the graphical settings on the highest level uh, and still maintain a good playable frame rate. And as you can see, there's a big wide open area, lots of stuff going on. I've got three of the characters um, around and uh, the frame rate's not going beneath 30. So very, very playable. Again, this, you do sort of want a bit of a high frame rate for this game. So you may want to uh, lower the settings a bit more in order to get that higher frame rate to make it more comfortable to play. But as you can see, minimum of 40, I'm engaging people in combat, there's lots of stuff going on. It's a big level, we've got lots of lighting effects and it's not really dropping beneath 40. And the minimum I saw earlier was uh, 30, so very, very playable. And again, I think it's credit to the Source engine where uh, Left 4 Dead 2, Left 4 Dead 1, Counter-Strike Source, Counter-Strike Go, 
uh, or, or uh, on as well as the Half-Life games. So now we're in Saints Row 4. Um, the preset default settings uh, have been downscaled to 720p and the preset is at low. So I'm going to leave it at that for now and start the game and see what we can get. Maybe we can uh, upgrade the graphics a bit if we see we do get a very high frame rate. Right, because I love voices in my head. Kinsey, I'm unarmed here. So it's not running amazingly well. We're getting about 30, 35 FPS, and this is, as I say, at 720p, and uh, fairly low settings. So the preset is low, so it's not going to. It doesn't look particularly good anyway. Uh, Saints Row if compared to other games, and also this is at the lowest end of the settings. So um, not the best looking game. This is definitely a stable, playable frame rate. Uh, um, that's quite. That's quite cool, that wasn't it? Um, but not one you're going to really enjoy. We're going up to 40, so uh, perhaps we're averaging about 35, 40 FPS. So yeah, we're not really going under 30 FPS anywhere here, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, so I think if you're interested in playing Saints Row 4 and uh, obviously any of the previous games, they're going to run a little bit better. I think Saints Row 3 and 4 are uh, pretty much uh, look the same, so you can expect the frame rate to be pretty similar as well. But um, assuming you're happy to have a low res and uh, low preset settings, then uh, yeah, this is definitely playable. So the penultimate game we're going to look at is The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. I actually really enjoy this game. It's quite short, but there's a nice little uh, story and uh, the plot twist at the end is pretty good. And it's also absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the nicest looking games I've ever played. Really, really uh, artistic and uh, fantastic to, to watch and to look at and to play. But as you can see straight away, I'm struggling to uh, even get through the uh, menus in order to reduce the settings to make it playable because... Um, Basically, I just it's so slow even in the menu, so that's a shame straight off the bat. But let's try and reduce the settings and see if we can make it uh, playable in game. So that's a real shame. We're in the game, pretty much the lowest settings you can get, and we're barely getting uh, about 15 frames per second here, which is a shame because I thought actually this would do a lot better. It is a, a beautiful looking game, it's absolutely gorgeous. I really recommend playing it if you haven't. Um, but I somehow figured that the engine would run better on this lower hardware, but no, uh, we're just getting 20 FPS, so uh, this isn't at all playable, unfortunately, and even at the lowest settings, and uh, certainly this is not as good as the game should look, uh, with all the god rays on, and anastrophic filtering, and AA and bits and pieces, but uh, I suppose the frame rate is jumping a little bit, but as you can see in the forest there, it was down to 15, so you can't really comfortab comfortably play this, so uh, unless you really, really want to, I wouldn't recommend Ethan Carter on the XPS 13. So the final game we're going to look at in this XPS uh, gaming test is The Walking Dead. It's made by Telltale and their engines are used in loads of different games from uh, Back to the Future and The Walking Dead uh, to uh, sort of uh, Sam and Max and loads of other games. So uh, what if, if this plays well then you can assume that pretty much any other Telltale games, and there are loads of them, will play reasonably well as well. So the thing about Telltale games is that a lot of them are in sort of cutscenes that are pre-rendered. There's a lot. There's not a great deal that you do sort of on your own. There's a little bit of walking about, sort of interacting with scenes, and so it's not really a uh, particularly graphically intensive game. None of the Telltale games are, which is uh, great because it means that we can play it really uh, reasonably well on here. As you can see, we're getting a stable 30 FPS. It almost looks locked to 30. Um, you know, we're not really getting any variation. Maybe a little bit higher. Oh no, it's gone up to 60 now. So uh, that's very peculiar. It seems to go between 30 and 60 locked. So um, that's obviously something to do with the game. You can't seem to turn that off. Let me see if there's anything in the settings that's sort of a V-Sync or something. But um, so you can see we're running at uh, that res. Uh, pretty high settings. We've even got anti-aliasing on. Uh, so top settings. But uh, let's, let's put the resolution up to n the native full HD and see if that makes any difference to it. Not really, again we're getting back to the uh, basically stable locked 30 and then back, back up to the 60. So um, that's kind of peculiar how it keeps uh, switching there, but uh, it's not dropping as you can see, this is handling really really, really well. And this is, a, uh, not, this is a pretty good indicator of how the game will run, there's actually more going on here than there usually is, because you tend to just be walking around pretty static environments. Uh, before you go into cutscenes and then make decisions in these sort of games. So, I'm impressed with that. I think we can establish that The Walking Dead is very playable, and with that, uh, pretty much any Telltale game is also very playable because they all run a similar engine on the XPS 13. So, that's the last one. I think it's time to have a bit of a sum up. So, we've played a whole bunch of different games on the XPS 13, and I'm actually really surprised at how capable it is as a gaming machine. Uh, games like Bioshock Infinite, which I didn't think would run well at all, were fantastic, really, really playable. Uh, as well as that, Company of Heroes 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Grim Fandango Remastered, Left 4 Dead 2, and uh, The Walking Dead all performed really, really well. 
and it were more than playable on this uh, computer. Unfortunately, things like Dying Light, Saints Row 4, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Cities Skyline uh, didn't really play well at all. Even with lower resolutions or lower settings, you just couldn't get a stable frame rate in them. So one of the most interesting things I've seen is how much of an impact the resolution has on the frame rate of the games. We saw it sort of half uh, the frame rate in, in some games by going back up to the native full HD res. Now in some games you could do that, some less intensive games, but others you did have to drop to 1280 by 720 or 1366 by 768. So with that, what I would say is, if you're looking to game on uh, the XPS 13, don't go for the higher resolution 3800 8 by 1800 model, because not only does it have the glossy screen rather than the matte one, which we have here, so we're not seeing my face in it, which is, I think, better for gaming, if you're, especially if you're traveling, but also that high resolution uh, Quad HD, bringing it down to 720p uh, is gonna look really blurry, not, it's not gonna look nice at all, and it's something you, you do need to do for the, uh, most games. Uh, so definitely opt for the full HD one like I have here, save yourself some money, and you may say that, well, the uh, Quad HD one has 16 gigs of RAM or has an i7, but those things don't really make much of a difference at all in games. That's more uh, sort of for video editing, for photo editing, for design. If you do want a gaming laptop and you want the XPS, I would suggest getting the XPS 15, the larger, more expensive model, because with that, not only do you get the integrated Intel 530 chip over the 520 in here, but you also get the optional dedicated uh, NVIDIA 960M graphics card, which will make a night and day difference to gaming. So if you do want a game, get the XPS 15 with the 960M. So one final point to mention, which I bet a lot of you will be wondering, is how loud did it get in terms of the fan? Did it get particularly hot? And the good news is that uh, I had no issues with either of those whatsoever. A lot of people did have problems with the earlier model, the 9343, which came out in the beginning of 2015, but I can say uh, for absolute sure, especially with for my model in particular, um, that there's no issues with overheating or fan noise at all. I barely heard the fan at all. In fact, I can only think of once when I was um, changing the settings in Dying Light that I hear a slight whir from the fan, but that was really only just sort of slight, and any game noise, any volume from anything else would uh, you know compensate for that. You, you wouldn't hear it at all. So fan noise, very, very impressive. And also the heat, you don't feel it. Only the uh, bottom where the fan is underneath does it get a little bit warm, and I do say warm. Uh, I, I wouldn't describe it as hot or anything, and uh, certainly not uncomfortable if you want to play it on your lap. So quiet, cool, and uh, you know capable of running uh, most of the games that we tried today. So very, very impressive from the XPS 13. Highly recommended laptop and pretty decent gaming capability. So thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and let me know what you think of the XPS 13 in the comments below. You can of course check out my full review of this on my channel right now. I do highly recommend it and uh, you can I'll be uh, bringing you more content on the XPS 13 uh, in the future as well. So stay tuned, stay subscribed and uh, I'll catch you again on the tech chat. Cheers guys.